<laughs> Don't mind the pun. Let's jump into this. This is something that's going. This is going to burn in some knowledge from the previous another session. It's a different presentation. Uh, geometric center line is viewed from above the vehicle. It's an imaginary line drawn from the center of the rear axle to the center of the front axle. You kind of got to be thinking like an engineer, you know, if you're building something like it. Even if you're building a buckboard wagon, you don't have this, this uh, stuff going on. Okay, so what's the first priority? First priority is stability and control. Higher contact patches have to be relatively equal whenever possible. What would change the tire contact patches? This is the amount of tire that's touching the road. What um, would change flat? The flat would change it. Is Low tire inflated? pressure. What else? Ever inflated. Hmm? Over inflated. That's another thing. Anything um, else? Bowing outward. Like on the side of the thing. Well, what about the different size tire? Wrong size tire. You got on there one tire, it's a different size from all the rest of them. In the spare tire, a little bit smaller than the original? Well, they'll have donut tires on there. You know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the donut, on some cars now, the donut is as big as round as the rest of the tires. It's just a little narrower. I saw that on a Cadillac a while back. All right. If any one tire's contact patch exerts the force, it doesn't match the other. The driver must constantly steer the car to keep it moving in a straight line. If you've ever had to do this, you'll know why this guy's got an ugly look on his face. All right, sometimes you'll have to do this because of crosswinds. If you've ever driven in uh, the Texas Panhandle up there, where all those canyons are, where there's all these dangerous crosswinds and everything, sometimes you'll have a crosswind blowing across the road and you'll be steering into it. And then an 18-wheeler will come along and block the wind off of you and you almost drive under the 18-wheeler because the wind isn't there anymore. You know? But uh, anyway, wind aside, if you have to keep steering the car to drive it straight down the road, that's very annoying. Now the thrust line describes the actual direction the rear wheel steer the car. We were talking about this you know, for this morning. The right pointing thrust line or a left pointing thrust line. It can be either way. You notice how in this particular illustration, they've got the axle crooked under here. Both of these right here, or one's towed out and the other's towed in. And this would be like an independent suspension deal. And that causes this to have to turn. They've also illustrated tow out on turns here. So you know, suppose the inside tire is turning farther than that one. All right, the thrust angle is the angle formed by the comparing chassis geometric center line to the rear wheel thrust line. It's measured in degrees. And so, so how many degrees are in a circle? 360. All right. What are you going to say? I'm just Yeah. At least they didn't say that the biggest fish they caught in the pond was two pounds and 25 ounces. I thought I was going to croak when that guy told me that. I said, pardon me, say that again. He goes, two pounds and 25 ounces. So I asked some other people, what do you think about that? He said two pounds and 25 ounces. And so I said, that ain't a very big fish. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Thrust angle. A right aimed thrust angle that deviates from center line is referred to as positive, and a left aimed thrust angle is negative. Find yourself a memory bug right now to remember that. Which is positive, which is negative. So, see, one of them is left, one of them is right. Positive thrust angle, in the right direction of travel is this way, right? Think about that. Negative thrust angle. Why are they switching? So, this is the center line, this is your thrust angle. See that? This is a really solid illustration of that. Center line steering refers to a level steering wheel position. You remember when I put the steering wheel holder on that steering wheel over there whenever you had the car on the front end? If you don't have the steering wheel holder on it, so you hold the center in the middle. If, you're if you do your toe adjustment with your steering wheel off center, you may have that thing beautiful on the machine, but when you drive down the road, the steering wheel is crooked. Customers don't like that. They pick up their car, they got a crooked steering wheel, they come back huffy and mad, and you got to start over. So the smartest thing you can do, after you've done all your alignment stuff, take the steering wheel holder off on it, turn it back and forth, looking at your screen and let it come back to zero and see if it's dead in the middle. The biggest problem is if it's kind of in a bind when you set it, sometimes it will cause it to be off center like that. You ever driven a car with a steering wheel off center like that? Very annoying. Yeah. Geometric center line alignment involves aligning only the two front, that's no two wheel alignment, you know. Uh, so back in the day, back a long time ago, all they would do is assume the back wheels were okay and align the front ones. 
Now, the reason they did that so much was back in the day, the solid rear axle under the back was just about always straight under the car, so all you really had to worry about was the front end alignment. Then ever the front wheel drive cars came and we had a lot of independent suspension and all of the wheels can be out of alignment. Start with the rear axle first. I told you that this morning. Always start with the rear axle and then go to the front after you've got the rear one straightened out. What kind of car is this that's on the lift right here? It's a Volkswagen. How do you know? No. You see the center of the hubcap, right? Y'all pretty sharp. All right. Thrust condition always causes the front wheels to steer in the direction of the thrust line. You remember when I told you I hit something on my pickup and the axle got crooked under the truck and uh, all of a sudden I'm having to turn the wheel about 90 degrees to yeah. go straight down the road. It was a great dog track. All right. Don't turn it. All right. Steer. The slide will change in five. No. Four. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> we got note takers in here today. Note taking is good. Y'all learned something from You got your number one note taker here today. Yeah. Who is that? Was, uh, no. Jacob is taking notes or what? Uh, no, I usually sit over there and take notes. Yeah. All right. Go for it. Thrust line alignment. When it gets in the direction of the front wheel, they should be set parallel to the steer direction of the rear wheel defined by the actual thrust line. If the rear is not straight, you've got to fix that first. Always fix the rear first. Start there. And then go cast your camera toe. Thrust line alignment. If there is no rear wheel adjustment set in the front wheel support of the thrust line, is the only accurate method of front end alignment. Now, if the rear axle is crooked under there because if the frame's bent or the, something's wrong with the leaf springs or some garbage like that, you know, then you're going to have to. That really needs to be fixed before you go any further. Uh, if the rear wheel racks aren't lined up right, you got to deal with that. Never perform a front wheel only alignment on any vehicle because it's impossible to know if the front wheel is parallel to the rear. Uh, front wheel only alignment is dead, and we should let it rest in peace. No F W O A. The test drive. Wait a minute. Of course, it includes. Does my name need to back up or what? Yes, 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 back up. Huh? Well, you can yes. back slide. I write slow. When I realize that's what we need to write. <laughs> you should develop your own kind of shorthand so you do not have to whine about things like this. Mm -hmm. I tried. Well, I don't write me, so that never worked for me. <laughs> All right, everybody got that? Oh. Measure both axles always. Remember, BAA. I'm ready. Both axles always. Of course, you include a number of road conditions that can affect steering and vehicle control. Write these down. One, a relatively flat straight section to check for pull, launder, steering, and wheel position. Steering wheel position, basically, is what I call mine. Uh. Stop start area to check for braking pull, torque steer, shock compression, and recovery. You know what recovery is, right? You know what it is? Recovery. Who knows what? You know what braking pull is when you hit the brakes and it goes off to the side? Torque steer means when you take off. It tries to go to the side when you're taking off. And that's typically related to one of the CV axles is shorter than the other one. One of them is going to twist more than the other one. And so one of the wheels is trying to pass the other one and it's going to pull you to the side. Shock compression is when you hit the brakes and the shocks do this. You know whenever you bounce the car? Have you ever seen a car that would bounce and then it keeps bouncing after you let go of it? Or somebody stops? Boing, 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 boing. You ever see that? That's bad shock. That's what it is. We had a Cadillac. I've got a video. I need to show you all a video on my YouTube channel on this Cadillac. And it's like a 05 Cadillac crossover. I forgot which TS it was. I, mean, you know, see, <laughs> I can't remember that. But when we had pulled that thing into the lift, I mean, the service bay and hit the brakes, it went, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and just bouncing a bunch of times, you know, just because of hitting the brake. And that's all that. Um, I worked on a little Ford Escort one time. It was a brand new car. And it was the only Ford Escort I ever saw that had a little turbocharger on it. I don't know how many Escorts they had their turbochargers on. But I says, yeah, that's a little pancake turbocharger. I've never seen one of these on Escort before. It's some of that bad stuff and everything. It came from Ford. It must have been some, I don't know what model it was, but I had to do something with the car. And so I, I got used to driving escorts. I drive all these escorts. And so I got to take off from, take out of the dealership. I go, oh, 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 like you would on an escort. And uh, I was in second gear whenever I pushed that thing down hard enough. A little green light came on telling me that it had turbo boost come on. And it broke rubber and just about jerked the car off the road. <laughs> the car steering, I was like, oh, what was that? You know, not used to that on an escort. That thing would scream. That was, <laughs> it was a big surprise. All right, the test drive, a dip and a bump to check for bump steer, bottoming and vehicle stability. You know, bump steer is when you hit a bump if it tries to go back and forth and all. Uh, bottom and out, boom, you know, you got those, uh, you ever do that? You ever, anybody that's ever drove a junky old car like me and Jennifer, and, uh, and I, well, he drives a junky car now, but whenever you, <laughs> I can't say junky. <laughs> whenever you hit the, whenever you hit the bump and you hear it about about, boom. You know, you hear it bang, you know, jarring your teeth. <laughs> you know, they got little jounce bumpers that are supposed to prevent that in extreme Stability. circumstances. Like really but typically that's going to be your shock related, you know, because it's not dampening the. That's a bumpy road there. That lady that was cleaning my teeth one time, we were talking about how they have a pothole out the road, and she says, usually whenever they get out there and get to working on it, they'll even make it worse if they'll put you a hump out there. <laughs> That's what somebody did there to put a hump. Okay, a right turn and a left turn to check for steer and return and body sway. Steer and return. What keeps your what I was talking the other day about this. I hope you were listening. What is what affects steering return? Which alignment angle most clearly affects steering return? Anybody remember? Mm -hmm. No, what they'll drop down. Rewind. Uh, Are you just talking about it or in a previous? Well, no, I, I, I talked about it in this lecture and talked about it last week, I think. Last two. Is it toe? Huh? Is it toe? No, it's not toe. You remember how I told you whenever you turn the wheels, because of the caster angle, which a caster is the, you know, is your uh, orientation of your steering axis front or rear. Because of your caster angle, when you turn the wheels, uh, you know, if you've got some positive caster, if you had a tape measure in front of your bumper, when you turn the wheels all the way one way, it's going to pick the bumper up. And then it comes back to the middle, it goes to the bottom, and you come to the left, it, it always wants to go back to the center because it's the lowest spot. That's what gives you your recovery. Don't, aren't you used to that without even thinking about it? Whenever you, you get through making a turn, it kind of automatically wants to go pretty much back to the middle. If it doesn't do that, you need to know where to go. Now, if there's really tight steering parts, it can cause that too, you know, like if you, you know, like if you jack the thing up and you have to fight the steering wheel. Uh, but uh, one of the things that uh, I noticed about Jennifer the other day, we were doing the hand exercise, she could pull them things in and make them click like I could, and because she's been fighting a car with no power steering here for a while, and she, she's got, she's muscled up. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I got a funny story to tell about uh, my aunt with her power steering later on. Uh, a vehicle's tire is going to have a major impact. Notice these two tires right here. This one here is taller than that one. Even though they're the same size tire, this one has got more wear on it, but they're mismatched. So somebody, uh, maybe they tore a tire or whatever, they put another new tire on there. Now all of a sudden they got this tire that's partially worn out and this one here that's uh, in a whole lot better shape. Like that's this. how much taller it is. So the drivability and controllability of it can Maybe be. back sitting down and the front stand up. Oh, not just that, <laughs> if it's side to side. That's the point, because yeah. that's usually how you're going to wind up with that. Um, I've got a whole PowerPoint presentation I'm going to hit you guys with later, but I always put the best tires on the rear if you're just getting two. If you're getting two new wow. tires, always put them on the rear, because if you don't, you'll spin out and crash, and then somebody will get sued. All right. First priority. You already Stability got that answer? Stability and control. Yeah. Stability and control. Good answer. Give that girl a cigar. All right. Chocolate cigar. Alright. <laughs> Use the metric center line. The vehicle. The metric center line. What? The metric. Say it louder. Say it louder. The metric. Yeah, that one, center line. Geometric. Geometric. Yeah, I can't Geometric. say it. Geometric. 
<laughs> Thrust line. The blank describes the actual direction of the rear wheel steer yeah. the car. Thrust line. All right. Y'all happy with that answer? Thrust line. Blank simply refers to a steer, a level steering wheel position. Huh? Center line steering. Center line steering. Would that be positive thrust angle? What? The, well, I didn't understand these two. The green's thrust. One's positive, the other's negative. Okay. But so what is this line? line? The green What's one? illustrated? Uh, the green I mean, don't make it harder than it is. It's positive. I mean, what I'm saying is. The green's thrust line. What, right? what is this? I mean, I'm not asking if this is positive or negative. I'm oh, just asking right. what it is. It's thrust line, right? Yeah, the thrust line. And the red is the thrust angle. Now you'll get to do the hard question next. That's the thrust angle. What's illustrated right? by the red line? Thrust angle. Okay, hold on, hold on. I messed up. All right, so now how do we label these? This is what I just understand. Well, if you were paying attention earlier when I was on that slide, you'll be able to label label with no difficulty. Okay, I got this. Hold on. The top is positive. Is that positive? Okay. I think C is positive. And C is straight in the middle. That's normal. So what is it? Normal. Is it normal? Yeah. That's normal, right? All right, everybody ready? Uh-uh. Oh, wait. Top one's. This is the geometry. Okay. So then the top one's got to be positive. And then negative because it's he's one he sent one time. Why did the top one have to be positive again? Because it's going out. And it, I don't know. I mean, either way. Like, it's going out. I have a memory bug that I use no. to determine. Then you said the positive is always, it always is. Well, in this particular case, you can't use that because it, you know, this could go either way. You're not on the corner of the car going out or in this way. You're in the middle of the car going left or right. So it's good. So is left or right a more positive position? Right. Meaning, yeah. So B would be. Yeah, and remember your positive? right your right hand is the one you left with. What? Your right hand is the one you left with, and your left hand is the one you right with. Your left hand. B is positive. What's the answer? <laughs> Negative, positive. A thrust condition causes what? Wait, what was the answer? A thrust condition negative causes what? Well, we'll see that in a minute. I've got another bunch of slides that's got the answer. A thrust steering condition causes what? Steering into the dir direction of the thrust line. Front wheels only. No. Uh, never perform a front wheel only alignment on any vehicle because it's why? It's the front wheels are parallel to the rear. It's impossible to know if the front wheels are parallel to the rear. Outstanding right away. I don't need to test drive, of course, you need to include a number of road conditions. What do you got to have? What? Flat straight section to check for full wear steering full. wheel position. But you have yours, but that's why I can't read mine. I bet you can read mine. Yeah. <laughs> well, where is the typically Flat surface. Yeah. Okay. You need a flat, you need a stop and start, you need oh, a turn. Oh, we all here still on the first. And you need a bumpy road. Right. Yeah. Stop, start, uh, Wait a minute, I wrote stop, start, second. I didn't get to finish right now. And a right turn and left turn to check right. steering return. All right, let's see if you got them right. Stability and control. Geometric center line. Is that that one around? Mm -hmm. Thrust line describes the actual direction of the rear wheel wheel steer the car. Yep. Yep. Center line steering. Geometric center line is the green arrow. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh. Geometric center line is the green arrow. Roll it, roll. Center line steering. <laughs> <laughs> Your right hand is the one you left with. Red line is the thrust line. I had it right the first time. Oh, man. Negative. Positive. Left is negative. Right is positive. Okay. Okay, so negative, positive. 
Just remember, left is negative. So I proceed to... We all left is here. negative. It's not hard to remember, is it? No. Left is negative. Just imagine it's like a number line. Left is negative. That ain't a bad idea. That's not a bad way to remember it. Or you can watch the news. I don't understand that. Thrust condition causes what? Front wheels to steer in the direction of the thrust line. Wait, wait. The front wheels to steer in the direction of the thrust line. Sorry about that. Okay. Never perform a front wheel only alignment on any vehicle because it's impossible to know if the front wheels are perpendicular to the thrust line. Everybody wrote that one earlier, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Flat, straight, stop, start, dip and bump, right turn and left turn. Okay. All right, you happy with that? You put that bus in the next sticker on your phone. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can get in there and find that video I was talking about with that catalog. What's that sticker saying again? Don't what? That's a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is an old Windows 10 machine. Are we doing this every day with your PowerPoints with these papers? <laughs> uh, we will do them some days. On some of the other days, I'll just depend on you to stay awake. All right. I like the one in the morning. You can go slow enough to let me do them. Well, I can read them all in here. Okay. My hand right got bad after I broke my arm. Appreciate that.